objectives. So that is why we say all the land must be reacquired by the state and then distributed equitably. But the land acquired by the state at the moment, three quarter of it is unproductive, Actually which is more. why I'm asking you, why is it a 90 percent was unproductive according to government's own mm. figures in 2009? Why do you think uh, wholesale uh, expropriation w will work given what we have seen so far? No, the, the fact of, of, of productivity is not related to the question of ownership. What no, you need to do, what you need to do is to acquire the land, distribute it. But you can't just distribute it. People don't <laughs> eat the soil itself. You then have to make sure that you provide uh, implements, you provide the skills, you provide seeds, you provide tractors, and all the wherewithal to make sure that the land is, pro is productive. As the, someone, one, someone has said here, yeah, even the white African farmers were not just given land. There was the land bank which was put there to make sure that they were given soft loans and all sorts of assistance to make it productive. That is what should happen. That's what happens in any country where there's, there's a redistribution. Mr. Walters, you eager now, look, to respond? Again, uh, it's a pity that, that I have to debate with the EFF when I want to debate with uh, the big dog, you know, the ANC and the minister isn't here. Look, I think the EFF's policy boils down to some destroying the property value, destroying the very value of that that you want to redistribute. Now, think about it like this. Destroying zero is a zero divided by no matter how many people you want to include equates to zero. So if you destroy the value of your agricultural sector, it's gone. We have saw, saw it in Zimbabwe. By doing what? We saw but it, it in Zimbabwe, you it can, can say the, the land people. in Zimbabwe uh, the, the is point, now starting to be productive not, I, I, again. I, 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 the tobacco industry, for uh, example. I, 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 I think 40 years of economic development was lost there. I think that's the truth. And uh, that's why one third of Zimbabwe's population left Zimbabwe. So uh, please, that's no model for us to emulate at any level. The, the, what the DA believes is broadening property rights because it's the basis of investment, it's the basis of productivity, it's the basis right across the world. The most successful economies, property rights are the basis of But first of you must preserve and the current believe, ownership patterns. And, we believe, and we believe that that property rights, those property rights needs to be expend, extended that ultimately what does that it reflects mean? What the, does that mean? For example, private title deed. Of, of, of the land that people that is uh, redistributed to people, we believe shares in in uh, uh, agricultural ventures. We believe communal land. People should own the property that they that they work. That will unlock credit. That will unlock productivity. And ultimately, we will sit with a normalised. Uh, we could have sat with a normalised agricultural sector if it wasn't for the incompetence of government. Of, yeah, government, I mean, government uh, really, just listen to this. Uh, then, what must be done about the land that was acquired over 250 years in wars before even the uh, land act of 1913? What must happen to the effects of the 1913 it's land act? You just making, what is saying is that you must use, arrest the current uh, ownership use, patterns. No, no, I don't let, let's let's so do you agree that uh, you must first disturb the ownership patterns which were created by the 1913 land act and its predecessors? You know, win, win formula for all South Africans, not, the, not have the destruction complete the structure of agriculture. You can't destroy the land. The land will always be spoken. here. Let him speak you and then I'll give you another you chance. How do you destroy the land? He's directly addressing me. You, you so. can never destroy the land. The land will always be here. It's a finite asset. Mm. The fact of the matter is that in that, any that economic situation, ignorance in any of the EFF when well, it comes to agricultural matters. Is, if it, if it it's, goes, it's not agricultural it's, matters, it's, it's economic matters. Agri it's exactly. Any economy is based on the you, land. You, you understand the that? Value you understand of, that? The value of land is how it is employed economically. Do you understand that any it's, economy is uh, actually dependent quite, on the I'm asset quite, called the land? Please come Gentlemen, the take a deep breath. Let's go back yeah. to government. If you want to answer a simple It's, a, it's, an emotion, it's clearly an emotional debate. And the ANC does seem to be going around in circles. It keeps changing policy, which is not good for investor confidence. Okay, firstly, I don't uh, speak on behalf of the African National Congress. I'm sure. just... Um, They're not here. Fair enough. I am, you speak I am on the government behalf of, of government. The, yes. The interventions that have been brought by government is through um, our land reform program that has uh, three elements, redistribution, land restitution, tenure reform, and more recently, land development. Um, in restitution, for instance, uh, we have reopened the lodgement of claims so that we can then give an opportunity to those deserving persons that did not lodge their claims uh, in, uh, uh, in 1998 to do so. We have also um, heard uh, the cries of uh, people, particularly the Khoi and the San, 
who lost their land uh, before 1913. And um, the intervention there is that we are busy now working with the Khoi and the Sen and um, uh, general South Africans to develop a program for exceptions uh, to the 1913 cut-off date that will accommodate the Khoi and the Sen heritage sites and historical landmarks. Let's go to AgriSA. Uh, Mr. Diaka, Dr. Diaka, workers are paid very poorly in the farming sector. And this is perhaps why the issue of 50% ownership for workers is on the table, it is a political discussion. Why, 20, why is it that 20 years into democracy, um, workers are still paid such low wages in the sector? The basic minimum wage is very, very low. Because 800 years into democracy in Switzerland, agricultural workers are also the lowest paid of all industries. This is the one industry which can actually accommodate the lowest skills, skilled part of the population. And it can accommodate the youngest to the oldest. Anyone can be accommodated in this sector. That's why, rightfully so, the National Development Plan envisaged that agriculture can create two million jobs in the next few years. Actually, we can do that in one year, should we have had a more... Uh, investor-friendly environment and a more labor-friendly environment. But you're talking about uh, work opportunities. Uh, you're talking about farmers making big profits and paying their workers who do the labor, who do the hard labor, uh, mm. a pittance. No, you are so wrong. The big profits are not there. More than half of all the commercial farmers in South Africa are not registered for VAT because they do not have that big turnovers. It's not for nothing that 90% of all the land reform projects have failed. It's not because the beneficiaries cannot farm. Many of them are actually excellent farmers. It's just that out there, when for people who buy their food from shelves and shops, it's a highly competitive market. The housewife buys with her eyes. She wants the best possible quality at the lowest possible price. And to, to, to deliver that to her, Asked from you in a global competitive market in the world that became so small that you actually need to be more competitive than the best in the world. And we have been spoiled in South Africa with the highest possible quality of food at the lowest, lowest prices. Compare us with even our neighbors. Mm. They have nothing like that. It is because of that that we are having this debate. You see, as a, um, was just said by the, the EFF, you cannot eat the land. It's what do you do on the land that makes you eat. And that is where Dali is wrong when it comes to destroying or uh, destruction of farms. You see, a farm is much more than just the land. It's the land plus heavy investment plus a business plan. And then you must make it work month after month. And you are not just competing against other farmers. You are competing against nature every day. Now, it's an emotional debate, and, and we're going to allow all our participants to give us their solutions on the issue of land reform 20 years into democracy. We still don't own the land. Back straight after this. Let's include you in the discussion on land reform by quoting some of your tweets. African Ali Naka says, land reform is an emotive issue. Becky Mbili says the ANC should have been invited to this debate. I hope an effort was made to do so. The ANC Kusatu, as well as the Minister of Land Rural Development, Gugile and Quinty, was invited and fortunately they were unavailable to attend. Sam uh, Clocktown says there are three classes of people, those who see, those who see when they are shown, and those who don't see. He's quoting Leonardo da Vinci there. Uh, as well as uh, EFF Mopani region says, wow, thanks, I want my land back without compensation. We are all watching. It's been an emotional debate thus far, uh, and I thought before we ask any more hard questions, let's give our panelists an opportunity to state what their views are on how to solve land reform. We keep having alternative po uh, policies. It's not, it's not working, clearly. Uh, from government? We have the National Development Plan. It is a plan that was developed by South Africans, a plan that was um, voted overwhelmingly and accepted by Parliament. 
it requires us um, to, to, to address the issues of poverty, inequality and unemployment. It has uh, six broad goals. Two of those are addressing past historical injustices and building a United Nations. We have um, developed policies for land reform that are aligned to the National Development Plan. All the policies, including the policy on the strengthening of the rights of the people working the land, are aligned to that NDP. Our solutions are found in the NDP and are aligned to it. Agree, sir? No, I completely differ from, from him. Um, we also bought, as Agri South Africa, we bought into the National Development Plan. We actually piloted a project, as it is described in the National Development Plan, um, since January in Pumalanga. And I think the DA is a bit um, opportunistic to, to propose that the pilot be in the Western Cape, because the, the, the Mpumalanga government actually offered the opportunity already in, in um, January. And we piloted it very, very successfully while the department was part and parcel of it. They actually also forwarded some of the financing for it, and, and, and half of it, as it is proposed in the National Development Plan, came from private sector. There is nowhere in the National Development Plan that you will find anything about this proposal of giving 50% to the workers, just as you will see it nowhere in the Green Paper. It is simply not there. This is the, the kind of chances which has been taken by officials in the department who have probably not even read any of those two documents. The, the development plan offers this opportunity for beneficiaries to partner up with well-established farmers who invest in those farms and to take them with them in the value chain to ensure their success because their own necks are also on the line. And I do not want for one moment to say that all farmers in South Africa will take part of it. But surely, the biggest ones have already thrown their weight in after it, and also the largest commodity organizations, Game SA, the sugar industry, the citrus industry. There's enough gravitas to pull this thing through and to make it work, sentence by sentence, as it is in the National Development Plan, and not the way it's been interpreted by the officials in this Gentlemen, department. Gentlemen, I'll get to you in a second, Mr. Mdons, a very serious allegation that the 50% worker ownership is not in the NDP. You, you are not going to see every proposal of government word for word in the, in the NDP, but no proposal is going to go through, is going to be enacted through legislation if it is not aligned uh, to the National Development Plan. The, the planning framework of government is very clear. You have the, 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 the constitution, then you have the National Development Plan, then everything else follows thereafter. The constitution is an interesting point too that we need to discuss in this debate as well. Let's go to the Democratic Alliance now, on your look, proposals. Uh, just just in regards to the comment that the DA has been opportunistic. Uh, if Mpumalanga is busy having such a project in place, wouldn't it be wonderful if the DA and the ANC and provincial governments can compete to see who delivers land reform the best? So, mm -hmm. so think, see, look at it like that. The DA is challenging the other provincial governments to show who can make the NDP work best. But our, what we want is the DA, we want the rapid expansion of property rights. We believe it's a win-win formula. It doesn't have to be at the expense of anyone. It doesn't have to be an ideologically, racially charged uh, debate. You mentioned the, made the remark that it's emotional debate. That's fine. But it should also be, not be an emotional debate. But how will you deal with debate. the issue of redress? But uh, you, you haven't been listening. What we are saying is that we actively need to find land actively find, form partnership, win-win partnerships to expand the property rights, expand shares in agricultural ventures in land until it reflects the talents of all South Africans in South So, so that, that's what we've been saying. So that is redress. It's not some communal state-owned uh, model. Real redress where real people own property. That's the best form of redress. Well, we still don't know who owns what land. Well, so that's, it's difficult that's unfortunately to have that uh, our, our representative from, from uh, government can answer that one. Mm. Mr. Advocate Mpofo? Yes. Look, the, this issue is quite simple. The contentious issue is the issue of compensation, which we have put forward. Now, the reason, you're quite right, it's an emotional issue. The question is. We are saying that you cannot resolve a problem as big as the land question without looking at the, its historical context. Black people have paid for this land by their blood, which was shed when it was acquired through violent means, 
by, by bullets uh, from the colonialists. They've paid through the land, by, through the 1913 Act, secondly. They paid through the land through the 1950s in the Group Areas Act, when the National Party even went further than the 1913 Land Act. And we're saying, why must they pay again for the fourth time by taking money from the state to reacquire the same land that we must buy, having paid for it in, in over 400 years? The land must be returned to the ownership of the state. The state, which is uh, our, our company, as it were, all of us as, as citizens, the state must then find equitable means of redistributing that land uh, to all the people equitably. But first, it must be acquired by the state. Not because the state must own it as the state. It owns it on behalf of the people as a whole. Is in the same way as the mineral resources belong to the people as a whole. You acquire it and then you redistribute it constitutionally, legally, and uh, in a fair manner across for commercial purposes, for farming purposes, for residential purposes, and so on. Uh, uh, to, to, to the citizens of the country. It's a very simple formula. Let, let, let's move on to, to another segment. It's a difference, it's a complete difference of approach. The DA and the EFF are in a different ideological spectrum. It's, you two are never it's going It's actually to nice to know where we disagree. But, um, and, and I respect that. The fact is we, have a, we know where we disagree there. My question is this. How can we take land, nationalize land, and hand it over to a government that misspent 77 billion rands that could have purchased half of commercial agricultural land in South Africa. We already. did it with water. Water is, what? Aqua, is, is owned uh, well, by the at, state. Look at the, look at the, the Dow of, uh, water of infrastructure The accusation is, is that 77 percent of funds which have been dished out in land reform have been, not, have been misspent. How are you going to do things differently this time? Where does the 77 figure billion rands come from? My guess is that that figure is uh, probably a, a figure that the Auditor General has said is fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Fruitless and wasteful expenditure doesn't, mean, doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the, the, the money was just thrown down the river. It, it means that it was used for something other than what it was intended for. So you find that in, in, in many instances it was used productively, but it's just that that was not planned for. Now, we have a big problem of patronage and we have a big problem of corruption in South Africa. If we expropriate all land, how do we know that that is not going to fall to the same sins of incumbents? Well, it will. Evidence, that's where, it, it will. That's exactly where that. you'll be surprised that I agree with my colleague on that point. It will. If you were to take the land and give it to the ANC government, then it's, it's just like uh, you know, dancing around the same tree. You need a proper government that is committed to redistribution, that is committed to the poor, that is committed to the working class, and that is committed to making sure that development is going to be bottom up rather than top down. So when we say it must be owned by the state, we don't mean the corrupt uh, state uh, such as the one of the, of the ANC, because all they will do is just to build mansions To say the on entire it. state is corrupt is perhaps taking it a bit too far. <coughs> Mr. Mdonsa, how do we, how do we guard against the constant change in policy, election to election. When I sit with big business, when I sit with, with mining companies or, or farmers, they, they always say the same thing. We don't have a problem with radical policy. Just tell us what the policy is and allow it to remain the same for a long period. Am I wrong in saying Absolutely. that? Absolutely. The policy is the National Development Plan. We had a plan and uh, the implementation framework for it was that up until uh, the end of the last administration, everyone had to align their policies with the NTP. And from the beginning of this administration going forward, it is implementation time. All that government is doing uh, is towards achieving uh, the six goals of the National Development Plan. Now let's start a new segment on Political Edge, which I hope will become a regular segment here, where I step out of the conversation and allow my guests to ask each other a question. Let's start with Agri SA. Who on the panel would you like to ask a question? Can I ask Advocate Mpofu? <laughs> of course. <clears throat> if you believe yourself that the current pattern of ownership of land became, came about because the land was actually stolen by white farmers robbed. from black people. It was robbed. Which part of South Africa would black people be entitled to, which was not, in your definition, stolen from the Khoi and the Sun? No. There were the, the 
black people, if by that you mean uh, indigenous black people, none of them acquired or stole the land by violent means as the colonialists did. With, uh, no spears, no wars, black on black violence, where, no where were those wars? wars. Well, we know that since Jan van Riebeek <laughs> arrived, they used guns. They are there, you have forts. Yeah. You can move from Cape Town right up to the Eastern Cape, right up to Messina. You will have a track of how the people were killed and how kings fought over a hundred years in the Eastern Cape alone. That's his documented. Don't tell me about I, imaginary spears that I are in your head. I offer Advocate Mpofu a history book of his choice, and I will pay for it. Let's bring you into the conversation, the DA. Who would you like to ask? I'm, I'm concerned about fixing the problems of the future. We have a lot of assets in our agricultural sector. We have a lot of people that are currently living in poverty that can contribute, can, whose talents and skills we can utilize towards job creation. That means that we have to extend property rights to as many people as possible. Do you have that a means that people, uh, uh, well, my question is this, where in the world without a broad movement towards private property rights, you can take it from a country like China, countries like India today, have we seen long-term economic success? The most glorious moment in history when, was in 1990 when uh, the world was liberated from communism, state control over the economy, millions of people got together to, to change a system of uh, state dominance of, of the economy. And I, I, my question is this, where in the world have you seen a long-term success with the state owning all the land? You're looking at the EFF, so yes, my question is for the EFF. Them. Well, firstly, he must uh, know his history. Communal ownership of the land is exactly what happened for millions of years before the introduction of, of capitalism and the private uh, ownership of property. And the question really that he should answer is where in the world has a, a capitalist state where, the, where property rights are owned by private individuals, can you have equality? The NDP, which they purport to support, strives for equality. You can never have equality in a dispensation of private property, of anything, because private property presupposes that somebody owns the means of production, the other people are going to be exploited to make sure that uh, those, uh, those means of production are, are exploited. It is inherently unequal, inherently so exploitative, my question. and in inherently... Show me a successful world, where society the where the government owned all agricultural land. Show me a system that did not collapse. All the societies that were there before uh, capitalism came in were so successful. But does any exist and, uh, today? I'm talking now in modern societies creating jobs for billions of people. We're not sitting with the same world population than we did a million years ago. Well, in uh, China... What, uh, what, uh, own, China uh, is moving towards owned. private property no, rights. No, China, I, I everything is state-owned in China. The only difference uh, uh, with China, the only problem with China... They property. It's state-owned, whether it's, you like it or not, movement, my friend. My, there's my movement, there's no movement. It's the, one of the most capitalist Who owns the land in China? In the Who owns the world? land? Who owns the land? What are they moving towards? Who Which owns is exactly the land now? You said, so you said let's talk about today. Who owns the land today? Where are they moving towards? The fact the fact is that in China, private... The next one is... In Zimbabwe. 1970, the next one is Zimbabwe, it up to private where the other one is Zimbabwe, where although we, de one we disagree, third of the population we dis fled Zimbabwe. can I finish? Mm. The, although we disagree with the means by which mm. the land was acquired, currently the tobacco industry is benefiting more than 400,000 black farmers in Zimbabwe. And they've gone What's through the, the difficult period, but for the rest of, the, of, of up to eternity, the land has been returned. So if we have What's to pay a small price of uh, teething problems for 10 years or so and, and redistribute the land equitably, so be it. I agree, I say, is, is that model of land reform working in Zimbabwe and China? This is why we export so much food to both those countries from South Africa. Our surpluses go to China and to Zimbabwe in Taelia. In Zimbabwe, why is only the tobacco and sometimes the cotton industries mentioned? Well, where's the food? Where's the cattle? Where's the, the grain? Why are two million people hungry? Because those are the closed value chains where there's only one buyer, one closed value chain owned by the processor. If you, have, if you want to see exploitation, Look at the tobacco and the cotton industries in, Z in, in Zimbabwe. It's a shame how those farmers are being paid 10% of the real price of those commodities. Well, at least they are paid but something. Food, it's, been asked and, it's been asked and answered. Oh. Advocate Mpofu, do you have a question? Well, uh, my question would be to 
all the people here because they all agree on the NDP as to how do they think that the emotional issue of the original asset in any economy is land. And unless you can have that original asset owned by the people as a whole, you can never be able to assuage the historical injustices that have occurred over so many years. And how do they expect that in a, a dispensation of private property, which is inherently unequal, you can have a, a product of equality. Mr. Diaka? I think, I think equality is being confused with everyone being the same. I think people different have different talents and, and different contributions to make to the economy, and I think one must unlock that and, and give it, uh, 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 get as maximum value to people for their, for their talents. Um, what I find ironic about the EFF is on the one hand, they object to a concentration of property rights in the hands of a few, the ownership structure that the DA sure. wants to change, but then they want to replace it with an incompetent state bureaucracy. Now, regardless of whether the ANC is in charge or whether the EFF is, God help us, ever in charge, the, the fact is it incentivizes inefficiency, it incentivizes corruption. What we believe is give c control over assets to people that they can utilize it for their own benefit. And that's what the DA's, uh, that's, 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 we believe, is true liberty. Mr. That Diaka, includes you, redress. Mr. Diaka, do you agree that there has to be redress in South Africa? The majority of South Africans work our farms, work our mines, and have no ownership and will not have ownership for the next hundreds of years if the current debates on 50% owners or whatever the new debates are every election keep going nowhere. I agree, and Agri SA agrees 100% that we need redress. It is the how that really ma matters. Because change of ownership of land will, is, is not equal to the transformation of the agricultural sector. What we need most are that beneficiaries of land reform can step forward as profitable, competitive farmers. That's what we are pursuing. And not just the transfer of land from white hands to mostly state hands and then we saw the farming enterprises collapse on that land. That's certainly not transformation. To government, why are the, the farmers that, we, that have experienced redress and have redress, why can government not show that they are profitable success stories? Surely if government was serious about land reform in South Africa and serious about black people owning the land and becoming big farmers, that would, that would be priority number one. Firstly, um, there are successful uh, land reform farmers. Um, it is just that the media that we have in the country uh, prefers showing negative rather than positives. If you watch a certain channel at half past five every morning, you're going to see those positive stories. If you uh, go to our website of uh, Royal Development, you're going to see those positive Invite stories. Invite me and I will so, come, so sir. It's the, to the, DA. it's the government's own statistics, his own department. The and you department said 90% were not profitable in 2009. 2009. And you're saying 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000. It back now to the, the minister indicated now there's a 27% success rate, which, by the way, we also uh, dispute. We believe that is funded. It's government carried. It's not independent people competing in a, in a, in a, in a marketplace, which is what we want. But even AgriSA is saying the reason hundred you've got 36,000 farmers now compared to 120,000 back in, in 1994 is because without funding, it is very difficult to sustain a farm. Well, that, that's why we need to attract investment. That, that, that is exactly what we are saying. If we can extend the, uh, the investment uh, picture in, in agriculture in South Africa to all our productive assets and, and the people and the talents that's behind it, then we can attract that type of, uh, a type of funding there. But we will not... Uh, the model that government has been following up until now is wrong. I believe that we have not spent money on empowering people. We've spent it on bureaucracy... And, and frankly, uh, we destroyed the value of the land reform projects. Advocate and Paul, we're fast running out of time. I don't want to end this conversation without talking about the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, our current land reform policies are failing because we tied into a, the Royals Royce, Ro, Royals Royce of constitutional models instead of something more practical? Yeah, well, the Section 25 of the Constitution uh, is where the problem starts. But... I'm personally of the view that if you interpret Section 25 correctly, you can still have uh, expropriation without compensation. Because Section 25 says that 
You, among the uh, issues that you must take into account in fixing compensation is the reasons for, for the expropriation. Now, if the reasons for the expropriation is the fact that the land was robbed from people, surely then uh, you can justify not compensating. If the, if the state was compensating my land or my farm because it wants to create a road or an airport, then of course they have to pay uh, compensation. But if the reason for a particular expropriation is the, is the fact that the land was robbed uh, from my ancestors, then there should be no compensation. So we, even within section 25 of the constitution, if you, you gave a, a, a generous interpretation, you would be able to uh, uh, have land uh, restitution without, or rather expropriation without I'll get without you, sir, now. Mr. Walters, why is the DA emotional about the debate on changing the constitution when the, cha no, 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 the no. constitution are, has, changed, on... has been changed many times? We, first of all, we don't think there's anything impractical about, about uh, Section 25. The problem is not the constitution. The cr problem is the wastage of resources behind land reform. As I said earlier, we could have had... Uh, already could have been a success story in terms of land reform if the last 20 years wasn't uh, missed as an opportunity. 77 billion rands, the value of agricultural, commercial agricultural land, not including communal land, not including government land, is 155. That's about half of our commercial agricultural land could have been in the hands of, of black owners in South Africa. It's without any constitutional changes, it's, an, it's, a, it's a bureaucratic problem, it's a policy problem, and you also can't just stereotype an entire uh, uh, agricultural sector and just uh, call uh, people that might or might not be descendants of, of the people that Mr. Mpofu refers to, just stereotype everyone as a bunch of thieves and, and therefore land can be expropriated. We find that is somewhat... Uh, 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 yeah, it's, it doesn't fit in, in, in a South Africa where we actually want to build win-win solutions and take our country forward. Ten seconds well, to respond. It's, it's selective, well, that's today. what you call selective amnesia. We must like, all likewise. suddenly forget uh, the, the, the fact it's of how the, the current... It's interpretation of history. That's how the mean. land was acquired, we must forget that and take an ahistorical approach and think mm. that the world started in 1994. I'm interested that is in the future. That's the future. No, you can't be interested in the future without by forgetting the closing comments? The, the, about 5% of all the farms in South Africa exchange hands per annum. The average, and that is a very broad average, term for a farm to remain in one, uh, one pair of hands is about 20 years. We are 20 years into democracy already. The current pattern of ownership did not come about because any of the farmers who are today on the farm stole land from anybody. This needs to be very clear. And if you just take out that notion from the EFF's uh, premise, then the whole castle falls apart. The, the, the problem part. is not the ownership of the land, the but the that's business the that's being conducted on the land. And that business is being conducted because we offer our land as collateral with banks, and then we borrow money. And if we take about out market value, then there is no financing of agricultural inputs. And then so food security is gone. You've made your point, sir. Let's go to government for a final comment. Surely 20 years of democracy, that uh, land distribution has failed, that workers mine and farm, uh, farm a land which they have no ownership, no stake, they are not shareholders in, is a, probably one of the biggest failures of government. How are you going to resolve the issue without constantly changing policy? We have proposals in our green paper supported by policies on each and every one of those proposals of, of, of the challenges that we have mentioned. We have a land development uh, program, recapitalization and development program we call it. We are supporting farmers. Um, we, we have a responsibility to make sure that people living on farms, three million of them currently living on farms and working there, that uh, their relative rights are secured. Uh, those people who lost land, we've got um, the, the reopening of lodgement of claims. People are currently flocking our offices, uh, claiming their land back. We are redistributing land on a daily basis. O other than... Um, 
the, 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 the panelists here, we are doing something about it on a daily basis. But surely we can all agree, gentlemen, we were out of time, but surely we can all agree that on the issue of land reform, 20 years into democracy, we don't have a good story to tell. The NDP was the heart of this debate, as it was last week, when we discussed government's plans to spend over a trillion rand on nuclear energy, but like the issue of 50% ownership of workers, and like the issue of the trillion rand spend, we're planning on spending on nuclear. It isn't contained in the NDP. Next week, we discuss economic policy. Good night, South Africa.